Hi everyone, this is Coordination and Control Part 2 and it's all about the stimulus response model and also reflex responses. Okay, so first of all, we've got to look at this key idea. Organisms selectively detect and respond to changes in the internal and external environments. Right, and they do so through this process here, which is a, the stimulus response model. Now, I've got an example here because I think it's going to help me to explain this to you if we can refer to something that we're familiar with. Now, I'm sure you're familiar that your pupil changes size depending on the light conditions, uh, and that's due to the iris opening and closing. So here we have an eye in normal light conditions, and you can see the iris is open, and we can see that because the pupil, which is the black part in the middle, is quite big. When the light becomes brighter, the iris closes and the pupil becomes smaller. All right, And that's because the eye is actually trying to control how much light it allows into the eye. In normal light, it needs to open up and allow a bit more light in. In bright light, it closes and doesn't need to let as much light in. Now, that process happens using the stimulus response model. Okay, first of all, we have, as we read here, a change in the internal or external environment. Now, that change is called the stimulus. And in the example we looked at here, the stimulus is the amount of light, the light intensity. So when the light intensity goes from normal and becomes bright, that is a stimulus. And our body can detect that using a receptor. Now the receptor in this example is the eye itself and the cells in the eye which detect the change in light. So that is called our receptor. The next part of the stimulus response model is the transmission of a message. And if you've watched Coordination and Control Part 1, you would have learnt about the two types of message which are nerve messages and hormone messages. In this situation, where we have the change in the pupil circumference, we're looking at the transmission of a nerve message. So the nerve message is sent, and then we reach a point where we have something called an effector. And the effector is the part of the body that's going to bring about the response. So I'm going to talk about the response first. Now we know what the response is. The response is that the iris was opened and now it is closed. So that was the response, closing the iris to make the pupil become smaller. The effector is what actually brought about that response. And in this situation, it's the muscles in the eye which are actually controlling the size of the iris. So the effector was the muscles in the eye and the response was closing the iris. So that's our example of the stimulus response model. And it's a really important model because it is what helps us to respond to changes in our environment, which can be really important for making sure that we're able to survive. So this slide focuses on sensory receptors, which are the first stage in the stimulus response model. Sensory receptors detect changes in the external environment, also known as stimuli, which is the plural for a stimulus. Okay, now the sensory receptors are really important. Here's our senses here, sight, smell, taste, sound, and touch. There are five senses. Those five senses are critical for us to be able to protect ourselves from danger, uh, and make sure that we don't end up in any dangerous situations. Um, you can imagine if you lose the, those senses, it can cause some issues, and we're going to struggle to be able to survive without them. Examples of stimuli are things like chemicals, uh, sound, light, temperature, and touch are all things that we can detect using our sensory receptors. And as I've explained, 
Those sensory receptors are critical for our survival because without them, we're not going to be able to detect any changes in these sorts of stimuli. Okay, this slide looks at something which I'm sure you're probably pretty familiar with, which is the reflex response. A reflex response, here's a good definition here, it's an automatic response, which means it's something that happens without thinking about it, an automatic response to a stimulus where the brain is not directly involved. That's important, that last part there, and we'll come back to that in a minute. The brain is not directly involved. A nerve message passes into and out of the spinal cord. The spinal cord actually coordinates a reflex response. And there's some very good reasons for that. And firstly, I'm going to direct your attention over here. A reflex response is a rapid response which provides us with protection in times of danger. So here I've got an example of a reflex response, which you might be familiar with. It's called the knee-jerk reflex. Um, basically, what happens with the knee-jerk reflex is when you're tapped in a particular location just under the kneecap, a reaction happens where you kick your leg, which it's showing just down here. I'm going to talk about the pathway in a reflex response, and I'm going to use this example. First of all, the stimulus is going to be the tapping under the kneecap. That's going to be detected by a receptor, which is just here in the leg muscle. That receptor is going to detect the stimulus, and it's going to send a message along a neuron, which is a chain of nerve cells that carry nerve messages. And this neuron is called the sensory neuron, and that's because it's carrying the message from the sensory receptor. It's doing the sensing, so we call it the sensory neuron. Now, because this is a reflex response, the sensory neuron only takes the message to the nearest location on the spinal cord. It doesn't travel all the way up to the brain and all the way back down again. It only goes to the nearest part of the spinal cord, the spinal cord processes it, sends a message back along the motor neuron, which is the name of this nerve pathway. It's called a motor neuron the way that I remember it. Motors make things happen or make things move, and the motor neuron is going to send a message back to the effector, which is the leg muscle, and the response is going to be kicking the leg. So summarising that pathway, we have a stimulus, we have a receptor, a message is sent along a sensory neuron, it's a nerve message of course, the spinal cord sends a message back along a motor neuron to the effector, which is the muscle in the leg, which causes the leg to kick. Now, uh, other examples of reflex responses are things like swallowing, pulling your hand away from a hot surface, and also the eye adjustment, which we've looked at, and the opening and closing of the iris. These are our three examples of reflex responses. Now, there is, as I said, there's a reason why the brain is not involved directly in coordinating a reflex response. And remember that a reflex response occurs to protect us from danger. And I'm actually going to use this example of removing a hand from a hot surface to have a look at, at why the brain's not involved. So let's just blow that up a bit and we'll put it up here. Okay. So when you touch this hot surface, the stimulus is obviously that that hot plate is far too hot, you shouldn't be touching it. It's sensed by a receptor, which are the touch receptors, which can determine temperature in your hand. And they send a message along, of course, the sensory neuron, which go to the nearest part of the spinal cord. And this is where the reflex response saves us and protects us. If that nerve message was to have to travel up to the brain 
the brain process the message, send the message back to the spinal cord, the message go back along the motor neuron to the muscles in the hand and lift your hand away. In that time the message has gone from the spinal cord up to the brain and back, what's happening to your hand? It's getting burnt. You're going to get hurt due to that time. So in a reflex response, the message goes along the sensory neuron to the spinal cord, straight back along the motor neuron to the effector, which in this case is going to be muscles in your arm, to pull your hand away before your brain has even had time to process it. And it's all about cutting back on time to minimise the amount of damage that we're going to do to ourselves. That's why in a reflex response, the brain is not directly involved. A nerve, message, a nerve message passes into and out of the spinal cord directly so that we can cut off the amount of time in which da damage is happening. Okay, thanks for watching. That's the end of coordination and control part two. Uh, for information on negative feedback and body temperature control in humans, please watch coordination and control part three. See you later.